In this video, we're going to be talking about head-to-head -head comparisons. Head-to-head -head comparisons are a way of seeing who would win from a preference list if only two choices were put against each other in a plurality election in the absence of the other candidates. This is very similar to what we did with runoffs in the last video. The only difference is the two candidates that are in the head-to-head -head comparison don't need to be the top two candidates. It can be any two candidates out of everybody on the list. Some important vocabulary terms we have in this section are Condorcet winner and weak Condorcet winner. A Condorcet winner is a candidate that wins every head-to-head -head comparison they could possibly be in, and a weak Condorcet winner is a candidate that wins or ties every head-to-head -head they could possibly be in. It's important to keep in mind that you're not always necessarily going to have a Condorcet winner or a weak Condorcet winner. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Another thing to keep in mind with these problems is just like with the runoff election problems, to check that your final tallies sum up to the correct number of votes. This is the easiest way to avoid making mistakes. So let's look at an example here. So we're being given this voter preference ranking and we want to determine which candidate would win in each of the following head-to-head -head comparisons. First, let's see how many votes there are in total so we can check our work later. If we add up the total number of votes, we end up seeing that there are five votes total. Sometimes the problem would tell us this. Here we had to figure it out. We'll use it to check our work. Now let's first take a look at Nokia versus Android, and then we'll look at the other two. So for Nokia versus Android, we're going to treat this like a runoff problem. We're going to get rid of the other candidate, pretend they're not even included, and now we're going to figure out how everybody's going to vote. First here we have two voters and their first choice is there, so they still vote for them. Now we have one voter that has to choose between their second choice and their third choice. Their second choice is the more preferred choice out of everybody that's still in the election, so that's who they are going to give their one vote to. Now these next two columns of one voters, their first choice is still there, so that's who they are going to end up voting for. So Nokia ends up getting three and Android gets two, that adds up to five, which is the correct number of votes, and Nokia is our winner. Now let's take a look at part B, which was Nokia versus iPhone. What we'll do now is get rid of Android because they're not in this head-to-head -head comparison, and now we'll see how everybody else is going to vote. First, we have these two voters. Their first choice is still there, so that's who they vote for. Now we have one voter, their first choice is still there, so that's who they will vote for. We have one voter here choosing between their second and third choice. Their second choice is more preferred, so that's who they vote for. Then we have one voter here choosing between their second and third choice. Their second choice is more preferred, so that's who they vote for. So Nokia ends up with three votes and iPhones ends up with two votes. That adds up to five, which is the correct number of votes. At this point, if we go back here, we see Nokia won when they were put against Android, and they also won when they were put against iPhone. So at this point, we can say that Nokia is a Condorcet winner because it won every head-to-head -head comparison it could be in. What we have for Part C, iPhone versus Android, doesn't affect Nokia being a Condorcet winner or not, because Nokia is not included in that head-to-head -head comparison. But now we'll take a look at Part C, which is iPhone versus Android. Let's see, we'll eliminate Nokia now, because they're not part of this head-to-head. -head. And we're going to see how everybody votes. First, we have two voters that are choosing between their second and third choice, so they will vote for their second choice. We have one voter, their first choice is there, and then these other two groups of one voter, their first choices are there, so that's who they vote for. So we end up with iPhone getting one vote and Android getting four votes, so they win. Also one and four add up to five, which is the correct number of votes. Let's look at another example. Given the following voter preference rankings, show that there is no Condorcet winner. To show that there is no Condorcet winner, we need to show that each candidate loses at least one head-to-head -head comparison that they're in. 
because the definition of a Condorcet winner or weak Condorcet winner is winning every head-to-head -head you're in or winning or tying every head-to-head -head you're in. And if we just have one example where one candidate loses a single head-to-head, -head, they're automatically disqualified from being a Condorcet winner. So the easiest way to go about problems like this is try and show everybody losing at least once. We can start with um, a rock versus scissors. So we will eliminate paper. We want to show one choice loses and then we'll move on to the next. What do we have here? One voter, their first choice is there. One voter, first choice is there. So that's who they're voting for. One voter between the second and third choice, they're voting for their second choice. So that's who they vote for. So this becomes two votes against one vote. Rock wins. And this adds up to three, which if we count up here, one, one, one. We have three votes total. So that makes sense. Rock has won, Scissors lost. So automatically we see Scissors can't be a Condorcet winner because they've lost one head-to-head -head that they're in. Okay, so we've shown that uh, Scissors has lost once, but we haven't shown Rock losing once. We want to show that Rock also can't be a Condorcet winner, so what we'll do next is put Rock against paper. So we'll get rid of scissors now, and we're going to compare rock to paper. So we have one voter, their first choice is there. We have one voter here choosing between their second and third choice. They will choose their second choice. And then we have one voter whose first choice is here, and that's who they vote for. So again, we end up getting one vote for rock, and we have two votes for paper. So paper wins. This adds up to three, so that makes sense. Now that rock has lost, we can exclude Rock from possibly being a Condorcet winner because, you know, now they've lost at least once. And now we'll go to the last head-to-head -head comparison that we need to do. We've seen Paper win, but we haven't seen Paper lose yet. So in order to show that Paper can't be a Condorcet winner either, we'll now put Paper against Scissors because we haven't done that yet. We have one voter here choosing between their second and third choice, so they'll choose their second choice. One voter whose first choice is there, and one voter whose first choice is still there. So scissors ends up getting two votes, paper gets one, scissors wins, and paper loses. So this means paper can't be a Condorcet winner. So in the end, we don't have any Condorcet winner because each candidate lost at least one head-to-head -head comparison that they were in. Let's look at another example. Here we're being told 17 people are voting for their favorite type of potato to determine which candidate would win in a head-to-head -head comparison between Russet and Yukon Gold. So this is a little bit more involved than the other ones we did just because we have you know, more candidates to keep track of. So what we'll do now is treat this, again, just like a runoff. The only thing is we don't need to do any plurality elections first. They're just telling us to put Russet and Yukon Gold against each other. So we will eliminate the other candidates. And now we're going to compare these two to, get, um, to each other. First, we have a group of three voters choosing between their second choice and their third choice. So they will end up voting for their second choice. Now we have a group of six voters whose first choice is still there, so they will be voting for their first choice. Now we have a group of three voters choosing between their third choice and their fourth choice. Third choice is more preferred, so that's who they will end up voting for. Now we have a group of five voters that also has to choose between their third choice and their fourth choice. So they will be voting for their third choice because they prefer that, they prefer three over four. So those five votes all go to that one. So now we end up with three, and if we add these guys up, this adds up to 14. Three plus 14 is 17, which is the correct number of voters. So Yukon Gold would end up winning this head-to-head -head comparison. 
here's another example. It's the same voter preference ranking table that we saw in the last problem, but what I would suggest doing now, pause the video, try to solve the problem yourself, then when you think you have the answer, or if you get stuck, you can hit, you can hit play and see the rest of the solution. And now we want to compare purple to Yukon gold. So the first thing we'll do is eliminate the other candidates, pretend they don't exist, and just put purple and Yukon gold against each other. First, we have a group of three voters, and they have to choose between their fourth choice and their third choice. So they will be choosing their third choice because it's the more preferred choice out of what they have to choose between. Next, we have a group of six voters whose first choice is there, so that's who they will be voting for. Now we have a group of three voters whose first choice is there, so that's who they will be voting for. Now we have a group of five voters that has to choose between their second and third choice, so they will choose their second choice because it's the more preferred choice out of what's left. So purple ends up getting 8, Yukon gold ends up getting 9, so they end up winning this head-to-head -head comparison.